Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and welcome! Today we are looking at Lumberyard 1.20 Beta, which was released a couple of days back. So first off, a bit of a primer on what Lumberyard is all about. Here you can see it in action. It is a modern AAA style game engine and it is based on the same source code as CryEngine. Now you may recall CryEngine, uh, Crytek developer were in some financial trouble back about two years ago. They needed a big bucket of cash. Amazon has plenty of buckets of cash and gave one of them to Crytek. As a result of something like $180 million um, Lumberyard became a product. Basically, Amazon got a source code perpetual license to CryEngine. Since that day, those two have become different game engines. They share a common route, but they have evolved over the last two years in different directions. So now we have CryEngine 5.6 or something like that, and we have Lumberyard 1.20. They are no longer the same. So what is new in Lumberyard 1.20? Well, there are a couple things. First thing I want to mention, this demo we are looking at. This is um, Nemo, Project Nemo. And this was actually created to showcase um, slices and um, script canvas. Uh, so slices are a way of organizing your game world. You can see over here, uh, we've got the player slice inside it. We've got the submarine that we are looking at right here. And then we've got several other different slices, mines, environments, and so on. It's a way of splitting your game up. And this demonstrates this demonstra uh, demonstration demonstrates how those slices works. On top of it, it is all about showing script canvas in action. So script canvas, here we go. We will select uh, our root, our player submarine here, and you'll see there is a player controller script canvas attached to this submarine. And we can click right here and we will see the script canvas in action. Now, script canvas is their visual scripting system that they are working on. Uh, it's similar in design and idea as um, blueprints from um, Unreal Engine, for example, or schematic from uh, CryEngine 5. Point something. And you can see it's a flowchart based approach. So you see here on a handler input event, this input is fired off. And then you've got this logic based flow graph that continues on. And we've got a number of different events happening in the sample. So there's a pickup, uh, we got configuration, we got initialization code up there, um, and so on player movement, vertical movement. And that's the other thing that this actual demo showcases is how you can put together a game using uh, script canvas as your means. So we'll look at that in just a second. That was actually released back in June. I just completely missed covering that particular bit of news. All right, so about 1.20, what is in this release? Well, frankly, it is not the most overwhelmingly exciting release you are ever going to see. If you go to the blog, most of the major improvements here are building block fundamental things. So we've got improvements to the asset processor and the event bus system. So let's head on over to that blog post and then we'll get into a bit more details as we go. But those are the two big features. Asset processor scan times have improved. Asset processor is the thing that you know handles all of the scripts and uh, textures and models and so on. If you are an Unreal Engine developer, this is the kind of thing you really want to see come to Unreal Engine. You're waiting for the asset processor all the time. Well, Lumberyard is the same thing. But fortunately now, due to fast scanning mode, you will wait less time. So we'll get into a bit more details when we get into the full readme on that one. The other thing we got is eBus performance improvements. Now eBus or the event bus is fundamental to Lumberyard. This is basically the messaging system. So everything is component based. You can talk between those different components and different subsystems of the engine uh, and you do so using event buses. This is a communication system that decouples messaging between things. And what they've done is they've improved their performance by at least 20% in most cases and up to 80% in others to get closer to native level as if you just called, you know, uh, audio system play sound. Uh, so the message is almost at parity to if you just called like a play sound function on a pointer. So that will actually be a huge improvement for people that have bought into the eBus system all along. And what you are seeing is these low level improvements don't require you to make any changes. All of the APIs stay the same. So that is definitely a cool change there that people will benefit from. So if you're using Lumberyard on a daily basis, neither of these are really sexy new features, but having it set up and handle assets faster and having the underlying community communication system improved between 20 and 80% in speed, those are both definitely big improvements for existing users. Now, if we jump into the release notes, of course, I will link this in the linked article. You will see uh, a more high level feature. So first off, we've got again, the new feature for a faster scanning mode in asset processor. You do have to turn it on. Uh, the mode completes the startup scan faster by skipping some steps, checking if your assets have been modified. So it should basically lead to faster load up times and handling times for opening your projects. And then the event bus system has had a couple of improvements 
improvements. So eBus performance improvements have reduced the overhead of invoking functions through the eBus API by providing uh, by at least 20% in most cases, using eBuses to send events between different game systems and components now performs closer to that of a native function call, uh, thus reducing update times. Uh, the audio has a number of improvements. I think this is W Weiss, Weiss. Uh, external sources. You can now use W Weiss external audio sources features to specify a loose collection of audio files to be played back dynamically. Makes it easier to have, uh, I guess, playlists that are, you know, just less organized or less structured than what you've got now. Uh, you can now perform audio operations on a global scope instead of just entity scopes. You can now stream data uh, from a variety of input sources for playback by the audio system. For example, you can now play back the audio stream from a video file. Sound duration, and this is actually one of those things that in writing about and working with game engines, this is strangely often missing. It's, it's often hard to actually get how long a sound is from a sound effect. I don't know why that's the technically difficult thing, but they have the ability now. You can now obtain the duration of a sound at runtime by registering with audio trigger notification bus. Again, another example of eBuses. Uh, function and overriding the report duration info function and setting the panning mode. You can now use the WY set panning mode uh, to shift panning between speaker mode, 60 degrees, and headphone mode of 180 degrees. The animation editor has the following new feature. Uh, interrupting transitions, you can now interrupt a transition that is in progress with another transition and smoothly blend into a new state. Uh, mobile has AWS Device Farm integration. AWS Device Farm can now be used as a deployment target in the deployment tool. And physics, the physics gem got new functionality, physics being NVIDIA physics implementation of a physics engine. Um, physics force region component, you can now use the physics force region component to specify a region to apply physical forces to an entity. Um, and then in the script canvas, you can now obtain the value of the net forces exerted on an entity using the onCalculate net forth method. Um, so that is essentially the big new features in Lumberyard 1.20. Again, not the sexiest of releases, but um, a 20% improvement in speed for communication in your game system, definitely nice, as are starter, uh, faster startup and asset processing times. So again, quality of life features are in there. There is more to this release. You go to the import, um, improvements and changes, you'll find more uh, smaller level changes that are in here um, some SDK updates uh, you know that kind of stuff with a little bit uh, small improvements across the board and then we've also got some uh, fixes in here as well uh, but not a ton so uh, not the biggest release by any uh, definition of the word but definitely a uh, an improvement and if you are already using Lumberyard this is the kind of release that just makes your life better without theoretically making it any worse. Now on top of that, as I mentioned earlier on, there's also the Project Nemo sample that I showcased here. Uh, so we can see it in action right away if you wanna check it out. It's a pretty simple game. It's a third person game where you navigate through and shoot and try to get to the end while collecting gears, which I'm very bad at. And then you try not to hit those mines and then you get to the end and so. So it's a very, very straightforward, simple game, but it does showcase uh, slices in action, uh, script canvases have entirely implemented using script canvas. So it is a good learner project. And that's one of those things where Lumberyard is kind of lacking. And I think I'm getting closer and closer to deciding that yes, I am going to do some kind of a crash course, just kind of to get you up and running, to show you how to configure your environment, how to create your first project, which is remarkably so much harder working with Lumberyard than it possibly possibly should be. So just a heads up there, the setup portion of the tutorial would probably be the biggest part. But then I get into the basic, you know, here's how you create terrain, here's how you add physics, here's how you, you know, attach input to your uh, character or your component or whatever. And here is some basic game logic in both Lua and script canvas form. And probably that is the end of it. So I would show you the basics or the building blocks of starting up with a Lumberyard game, because this seems to be what is missing out there. There's, there's some examples now, which is nice to see that this Project Nemo one, which of course I will link as well, um, but there's not too much there for getting you started. And by the way, if you are looking to get started with this particular release, I got to warn you, every time I work with Lumberyard, I run into a wall, and this release was no exception, and mostly it comes down to the setup. And when you configure your environment, here I am showcasing what you want to enable for this to work. So I ran into problems with getting the physics gem to compile, and it all basically boils down to the configuration here. And this one and this one, you want to make sure that you install compile the game code, compile engine and asset pipeline, and compile the Lumberyard editor. And then you get all of the required SDKs to go along with that. But if you do not enable that last feature there, if you do not get the whole, um, 
Lumberyard editor and tools, it seems to fail for some reason to make that PhysX uh, gem. It, it runs into problems every single time. So do all of these things. Then what you need to do is uh, an LMBR underscore WAF. Uh, you'll find the instructions for that. But you just need to do a configure and then a build for your environment. And then the other trap, the thing that every single person falls into is once you have done a build, you do not use the link to the Lumberyard editor anymore. You make sure you go into the one in the bin folder for the version of Visual Studio you just created and that is the wall that most people are going to run in so if you want to check out the Nemo example you just download it as a zip file extract it to the dev folder and set it as active but do be aware once you build it you're gonna to want to have these settings enabled and you are going to want to uh, yeah, make sure you run the right editor once you are done. Those are the walls that most people are going to run into. So anyways, let me know if you're interested in Lumberyard, specifically kind of an introductory Lumberyard tutorial. I'm not sure that this is a game engine that I recommend to most people to use for their own project, especially on a smaller team, but I think it's one that a lot of people are interested in checking out and getting their hands on. And they kind of run into a huge wall right away because of the lack of learning materials out there. So if that's something you're interested in, please do let me know. That's, I'm kind of leaning towards wanting to make this tutorial now, both on dev game and over uh, here on YouTube. Uh, again, let me know and let me know what you think of Lumberyard in general and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.